guys, this is Jacob from RoboFlow. Today we're going to talk about what's new in FastAI version 2. I don't know about you, but when I started learning about FastAI version 2, my mind was just completely blown. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about what is FastAI in general, uh, and then we're going to talk about what is new in the new release of FastAI version 2. So FastAI is a popular deep learning framework and also a massive online open courseware. So the really cool thing about FastAI is that it is uh, written with different layers of abstraction. So at the very top layer, there's actual the real real life applications of artificial intelligence applications like vision, text, tabular, um, and collab. So these are uh, very high level abstractions that allow people to get started with the library very quickly. Uh, then also there's the uh, high level API. This is where uh, you can tune things like uh, the learner and you can bring in different data sets. And then if you want to go a little deeper, uh, there's the middle level of the API where um, you have things like the callbacks to edit your training loop um, and like the data loader core. And then at the very bottom layer, there's actually the abstractions um, of the lowest level where uh, the library is programmed to actually be running deep learning jobs on your GPU. Uh, so now diving in a little bit more into like what the mission of FastAI is. So FastAI was built to uh, basically uh, make neural nets uncool again. And the founders and the team at FastAI uh, are, uh, they're a nonprofit and they're completely self-funded. So therefore uh, they like to claim that they're completely unbiased um, in the work that they're producing, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so uh, basically FastAI is set out uh, with the mission to democratize uh, artificial intelligence, natural language processing and computer vision. Uh, to everyone around the world, which means that their library is super interesting uh, to use and a really great way to get started if you just want to start learning some things. Uh, so here uh, is an example of uh, computer vision segmentation and just how easy it is to get started with FastAI. So here there's a few lines of code. You can see here that uh, a segmentation data loader is being instantiated. Uh, that is being pointed at a data set. And then the learner is just uh, starting to fine tune uh, the given model here, which is ResNet 34, uh, to fit to the task. Um, and there you can see just with those few lines of code um, that uh, FastAI fits uh, to the task and then can show you the results. Uh, so you can get started with it uh, super, super quickly. Um, this is a high level abstraction, which is kind of reminiscent of other um, libraries like Facebook's the Tetron 2, uh, TensorFlow's Object Detection Library, or say like hugging face transformers, where a lot of the work that you have to do to uh, start a deep learning model of training and inferring is, is kind of already done for you and abstracted. Uh, and there's a model zoo where you can kind of pick from different models um, and get started with uh, using, uh, by standing on the shoulders of giants with the, the best models that are up to date um, just by uh, kind of using these high level um, abstractions. But the cool thing about FastAI is that you can start to drill down further from there. So you can go down into the mid-level abstractions and you can customize your training loop, you can customize your data loader, and you can use FastAI as a way to actually build up on top of PyTorch. So FastAI has built it completely on top of PyTorch and uh, it's a way to kind of uh, insert in and uh, start to make your own tuning. So it's also valuable for researchers as well as students and students who are becoming researchers as they're getting uh, more further along in the library. Um, and then lastly, um, some people actually will use FastAI to uh, configure uh, the way that training jobs are running on the GPU. Um, and this allows people to actually uh, be training jobs even before NVIDIA uh, may be releasing some new tweaks to say like QDNN, you can actually be changing the way your job is running on the GPU cores um, uh, yourself, via customizing via FastAI. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about what's new in uh, version 2. Uh, so one of the new contributions in version 2 is they completely revamped and enhanced the library. Um, so here we're just going to touch on a few new additions to the library. Um, I definitely recommend digging into the repository and digging into the white paper if you want to learn more. Um, but here we're going to just go through a few things I was really excited about. So. One thing, a uh, new concept in FastAI 2 is the infinite training loop. Uh, so the infinite training loop doesn't mean actually that your, your training is going to run forever. 
Rather, it is a way to infinitely customize the way that your training loop is written. So if we think about a training loop the way that it usually runs, um, here we have a picture that kind of depicts the way that training might usually run. So you start with some training data, you pipe that through a model, you get a loss function, you calculate the gradients, then you back propagate those gradients through a step and edit the model and then kind of continue in that continuous loop. Um, and if we think about the way that might look in PyTorch code, uh, we could see kind of some simple PyTorch code uh, here that defines the way that that might look. Um, but now if you think about it and you want to start making changes to this training loop, things can get pretty complicated. So maybe you want to be introducing a cutout or cut mix augmentation of the way your data loader works. You want to be doing some dropout regularization here, or maybe um, you want to be training with mixed precision so you can kind of optimize for your training speed. But these different blocks that are changing your training loop uh, can kind of start to nest in, into your code if you kind of leave it uh, all displayed out like this example here. And uh, things will get quite messy for you. And it's very hard to pass your code off to someone else or to add mix and match different uh, training blocks. Um, so to address this, FastAI version two adds this concept of the infinite training loop, which puts uh, callbacks in the middle of the training loop, which allows you to kind of take different training blocks and then move them from one experiment to the next and mix and match them. Uh, so here we have the training loop, which passes into the handler. So the handler can kind of see all different parts of the training loop and then feed, uh, federate out the training job to these different callbacks. Uh, so here we have some PyTorch code that shows uh, basically how that might happen. So you have uh, the training loop here as it's going through, but you're also making uh, calls to these callbacks along the way. So you can be inserting in your own custom uh, kind of PyTorch routines that are going in through those uh, callbacks in the FastAI version two library. Uh, another thing in the version two library that I'm really excited about is the GPU accelerated augmentation. Uh, so augmentation usually happens uh, on the CPU, uh, for example, before the data set um, has been formed. And this is generally how you will be uh, constructing data sets with augmentation in RoboFlow if you choose to use RoboFlow for your augmentations. Uh, but FastAI has actually added in a number of image augmentations into their training pipeline so you can do more augmentations on every single batch. Um, and these augmentations are also done on the GPU, so they're um, extra optimized in, in, uh, in that way. So there we go. There's just a few, uh, just a couple of enhancements in the FastAI version 2 library. Um, but again, uh, like I said, I recommend, recommend diving into the repository or reading the white paper if you want to see kind of the whole gambit of uh, different enhancements that were made in the FastAI version 2 library. Another thing that came along with this release is um, some very valuable helper, helper libraries. Uh, so these are FastCore, FastScript, and FastGPU. Uh, so FastCore uh, basically uh, adds features into the Python language that uh, the authors of FastAI version 2 uh, like. Um, so this kind of sort of rounds out the uh, scope of Python and, and uh, adds on some, some more features to like NumPy and such uh, that will make programming in FastAI uh, even easier. Um, then uh, the other thing is uh, they added this FastScript library, which easily lets you uh, wrap up your uh, Python code uh, and uh, put it into a CLI so you can uh, share it with other people very easily with FastScript. Um, and then FastGPU is uh, a library that's very convenient for uh, orchestrating your jobs uh, amongst amongst the uh, GPUs you have available as resources. Um, and then finally, the last thing that's introduced is uh, a new version of the uh, massive online open courseware. Uh, so this is probably the best part and most popular part about FastAI. It's a great course. If you want to get started uh, learning about machine learning and uh, deep learning and want to level up really fast, um, it's a great way to get started because you have that high layer of abstraction with FastAI. Um, and the authors of, of the library will really explain through uh, everything that they did to uh, construct the library and you'll, you'll learn um, very quickly by, by checking out this course. Um, so that's all for today. Um, in the links, I'll throw a link to uh, the courseware, the repository, 
um, and the cor corresponding blog post uh, from Rebelfoe here, uh, if you want to go ahead and give that a read. Um, and thanks again for listening. Feel free to uh, like and su subscribe below, and um, happy training. <laughs>